Good day students and welcome to our PE lesson this fourth quarter period. This lesson will cover module 1 and module 2 of PE this fourth quarter. The main focus of this lesson is all about lifestyle and the different active recreational activities that you can do to improve your fitness. At the end of this discussion, I will be showing the activities you need to answer. So listen carefully in the discussion and take down notes of the important details that may help you in answering the modules. Let's now begin with the lesson. How do you live your everyday life? Are you the typical couch potato or a physically active person? Students like you are faced with lots of things to do in a day. Many of your activities are less physically active or passive that you don't need to exert extra effort and energy. But others are physically active that requires you to burn extra calories. This module will help you choose physical activities from both indoor and outdoor that will surely bring you fun, fitness, and fundamentals. The activities are enjoyable and offer satisfaction to enhance the quality of your life. You'll understand that lifestyle and recreation will promote not just your personal fitness, nor your family's fitness, but the community's fitness in general. So get off your feet and jump off to the world of active recreation. Let us first define what recreation is. Recreation are the activities that you voluntarily participate in during your free time. It is a voluntary participation in an activity during free and unobligated time that gives enjoyment. It refreshes one's mind and body after a day's work. Recreation embraces both indoor and outdoor activities that refer to sports and exercise leading to the attainment of enjoyment as well as managing our desired weight. Experts suggest that in choosing your recreational activities, it should be of your interest and not of others, it should also be voluntary and not pressured by somebody, and lastly, it should meet your recreational satisfaction needs such as physiological, educational, social, relaxation, physiological, and aesthetics. The less physically active activities that you are into bring alarming effect to your health. Some of the activities today are sedentary in nature, requiring less energy consumption. According to the World Health Organization, the fourth leading cause of disease is inactivity. This is due to the popularity of the technological gadgets that you are up to and the poor health lifestyle. Due to this alarming fact, you are encouraged to switch into a more active lifestyle by means of engaging to active recreation. The way you live your life in an everyday basis is called your lifestyle. These are the patterns of your behavior on how you typically live. It includes eating habits, physical activity participation, and recreational choice. Do you belong to the technology generation? Well, these are the people who choose to spend time in front of the computer rather than playing sports, walking, and moving around. How about your eating preferences? Today's teenagers are seen in places like fast food chains indulging with unhealthy foods such as fries, burgers, and drinking too much sugary drinks that causes obesity. Participation in active recreation influences your healthy lifestyle. It improves health condition in many ways. It also helps you to use the calorie better and sustain a desirable weight. Lifestyle is a way of life. It is your style of living that reflects your attitudes and values. Today, most medical conditions are associated with one's lifestyle such as diabetes and obesity. For you to combat this health hazard, this module will help you to make a paradigm shift to a healthier lifestyle through an active recreation. Lifestyle change is the best way of preventing illness and early death. 
major causes of early death have shifted from infectious diseases to chronic lifestyle-related conditions such as heart disease, cancer, and diabetes. How do you maintain a healthy lifestyle? First, engage yourself in a regular physical activity. Second, eat healthy foods. Third, find time to manage your stress. Number four, follow a good personal healthy habits. The health philosophy can also guide you in starting a healthy lifestyle change. H meaning health, those who believe in the benefits of healthy lifestyle are more likely to engage in healthy behavior. E meaning everyone, healthy lifestyle can be practiced by everyone or health for all. L means lifetime, the longer healthy lifestyles are practiced, the greater the benefits. And P means personal. No two people are exactly the same. Your personal needs is the basis of your lifestyle change. There are many several factors that affects your weight. The first one is genes. These are inherited traits from your parents. Children can inherit the chances of being overweight or obese if born from obese parents approximately 80% chance, while non-obese parents can only have a 10% chance of bearing an obese or overweight child. The rapid growth which teens undergo causes a natural healthy weight gain. However, girls on their teens have hormonal changes that cause weight change. The second one is environmental factors. Aside from the genetic factors, being overweight or obese is also caused by some environmental factors. These include behavior and lifestyle choices. When a child is brought up with overeating unhealthy foods and under-exercising, he develops a learned behavior that leads to wrong lifelong habits. Let's now learn how you can manage your weight. The first one is energy balance. The concept of energy balance compares the amount of energy consumed as food with the amount of energy expended through physical activities, exercises, and resting metabolism. You can maintain a healthy weight by eating a healthy diet and balancing the food you eat. These foods are used as energy to keep your body systems working. You use some of physical activity and exercises such as playing sports and dancing. If you eat more than your energy expenditure, you will gain weight. If you eat the same amount of food that your body needs in your daily physical activities, you will maintain your weight. Then, if you have more than energy expenditure than food intake, you will lose weight. To sum it up, Weight gain means more calories are consumed, but less calories are expended. Weight loss means less calories are consumed, but more calories are expended. Weight management means the calories you consumed are equals to the calorie that you expended. Engaging in physical activity is one big step that you can do to start changing your lifestyle into a more healthy and active one. Being active would mean getting yourself into active recreation such as sports, dances, and some outdoor type activities. Let's now see what are the different indoor and outdoor recreational activities that you can do. We consider recreation as indoor when the activity is within the premises of your comfort zone, at home, or inside a building. Recreation is outdoor when the activity is undertaken in a natural, rural, or open space outside the confines of buildings, usually large land area that is close to nature. Let's start with the different indoor recreational activities that you can try doing. The first one is badminton. Badminton is believed to have originated from the game Puna that was played by English army officers stationed in India during the 17th century. It was later brought to England in 1870s when the Duke of Beaufort 
held a lawn party in his country place, badminton. It was only in 1992 Barcelona Olympics when the game became an Olympic sport with singles and doubles events. Games are held inside the gym to avoid the effect of air in the flight of the shuttle. Players need a racket and a shuttlecock to enjoy the game in a court. The game requires the skill and service, strokes in hitting the shuttles such as smash, drop, lob, or clear and net shorts, and power of the leg in footwork. The game is played by either singles, doubles, and mixed doubles. A game is won when a player or players reach a score of 21 points. In case of a deuce, which means 20 all points, one has to gain a 2-point advantage over the other. But in case of a 29 all points, the first to reach 30 will win the set. A match is won by winning 2 out of 3 sets. Here are some skills needed in playing badminton. First, power. A player needs power especially in performing a successful smash. Second, flexibility. Badminton players execute lunges for a quicker return of the shuttle. To perform lunge to its fullest, you need to be flexible. Third, agility. Players should move quickly in different directions to receive the shuttlecock immediately. And the last one is footwork. Footwork is important in playing badminton because it helps in the speed of the movement. Second is volleyball. The beginning of volleyball can be traced from the ingenuity of William J. Morgan in 1895 at Holyoke, Massachusetts. Initially, the game was called Mintonet. But in its first exhibition game demonstration, Alfred Halstead suggested the name Volleyball due to the volleying characteristics of the game. In 1910, the game was brought to the Philippines by Elwood S. Brown. The Filipinos are credited in the changes of the game with the addition of the skill called Spike or Kill. In 1964, Volleyball had its first Summer Olympics exposure as a medal sport. Volleyball is a team sport with six players in each side of the court with a 9 by 18 meters dimension. The objective of the game is to send the ball over the net and avoid it from grounding into your own court. A ball, net, and a court are needed to play the game. Scoring follows a rally point system. A game is won in a 2 out of 3 sets. A set is won by reaching a score of 25. In case of a deuce, a team should have two-point advantage over the other. Players need skills like service, volleying, setting, spiking, and blocking to enjoy much of the game and gain its fitness benefits. What benefits can we get from these sports? Badminton and volleyball are good recreational activities that involve the physical dimension. It enhances the metabolism of the body, which in turn is a factor in losing weight. Aside from the physical dimension, the games also has claims on affecting different dimensions of health of a person. When players control their feelings during games, the emotional dimension is involved. Since a sport is fun, the emotional well-being is improved. Playing with strategies and tactics involves the intellectual dimension. Thinking of ways on where to direct the shuttle and the ball gives you an advantage of winning and enjoying the game. The social dimension is seen when players build good relationships. Trusting your teammates builds camaraderie and teamwork. Third indoor recreational activity is the Zumba Fitness Dance. Zumba dance is an alternative indoor recreational activity with fitness benefit claims. It was accidentally discovered by Alberto Beto Perez, a celebrity fitness trainer of Colombia in the mid-90s. The birth of Zumba came about during one of his aerobics class, when he realized that he had forgotten his aerobics music. Quickly, 
he grabbed whatever tape he has on his backpack. It so happened that his tapes are those of Latin music such as merengue and salsa. With his improvisation skill, he was able to create an on-the-spot aerobics class using the non-traditional music. That's the birth of the dance fitness craze, Zumba. Here are some benefits of Zumba. It improves cardiovascular health. The combination of cardio intervals brought about by the fast and slow rhythms makes this dance a great cardio interval workout. The fast and upbeat moves of Zumba improve the delivery of blood which carries oxygen to the different parts of the body through the veins, arteries, and heart. It helps in losing weight. Cardio interval effect of Zumba maximizes the burning of calories. Joining Zumba workout for an hour burns approximately 600 calories. It relieves stress. It is believed that Zumba dancing releases more altering endorphins that melts away worries. It improves mood. It releases feel-good hormones called endorphins that improve self-esteem, self-confidence, and self-image. Lastly, it tones the abdominals. The dance moves work on firmer core abdominal muscles. Now let's go to the different outdoor recreational activities. The first one is hiking. Hiking is going on an extended walk for the purpose of pleasure and exercise. Pleasure includes having close encounter with nature, enjoying the beauty of the environment, smelling the natural aroma of flowers and trees, and being one with mother nature. Exercise, on the other hand, pertains to the fitness benefits that we get from the activity. Hiking is more of an adventure. Here are some benefits of hiking. It offers cardiovascular fitness. It gives the feeling of relaxation. It balances your daily life routine. It's a good option for weight management activity. Here are some essential tips for the outdoors. First, pick a partner. Find a friend who is an experienced hiker or backpacker. It's safer to travel with a friend or group of friends. Plus, an experienced hiker can share valuable tips and advice about the wilderness. Second, pick a destination. Do your research on your destination. Read travel books, websites, or magazines. Ask well-traveled friends too. Third, know your time and distance. Know how long and how far the trip will take you. This will help you plan what you need to pack. This will also help you when making a budget for the trip. Fourth, be physically ready. Make sure you are physically fit for the hike. You should have ample endurance to prepare yourself for long walks. Practice carrying heavy bags so that you will also build strength. Fifth, choose your gear and your backpack. Try to pack as light as possible. Think about which comforts of home you can leave behind to save space and weight. Use a climbing checklist to help you decide what to bring. You can also rent or borrow equipments from other hikers. When choosing a backpack, look at its carrying capacity and its size. It should be big enough to fit all your belongings and snug enough to stay close to your back. Pack your heaviest gear close to your back and near your shoulders. Next, pack and wear appropriate clothing. Wear moisture-wicking or dry-fit fabric because this absorbs sweat faster than cotton and dries easily. Wear proper footwear such as hiking shoes or trail runners as most sneakers or sandals may not have enough grip on their soles. Wear a hat to protect yourself from the sun. Always bring a rain jacket in case it rains. Wear comfortable pants such as trekking pants or shorts. Jeans can be heavy and quite hot if worn during hiking trips. 7. Plan your meals. Bring some trail mix, nuts, chocolate, jelly, cereal, etc. to keep your energy up throughout the day. If going on overnight hikes, 
plan your meals accordingly. If traveling with a big group, divide the team into smaller groups and assign a meal per small group. Number 8. Keep communication lines open. Not all areas have signal for your mobile phones but keep them handy in case of an emergency. Before you leave your trip, make sure that you have a contact person who knows all your emergency details. Keep the contact person informed on your whereabouts at all times if possible. Leave your itinerary with the contact person. Number 9. Wilderness Ethics Pack out what you pack in. Practice the leave no trace principles by picking up after your trash and bringing them home with you. Modulate your noise levels. Remember, some people go into the wilderness to relax and unwind. Respect the privacy of other people. Be respectful and courteous to other visitors as well as to the wildlife. Enjoy the view and the experience. Here are the 10 essential checklists for backpackers. These are for safety, survival, and basic comfort. First, for navigation, map, compass, and GPS, but optional. Second, sun protection, sunscreen and lip balm, sunglasses. Third, insulation, rain jacket, extra layers for cold conditions. Number four, illumination, headlamp or flashlight, and extra batteries. Number five, first aid supplies. Make sure you have first aid kits. Next, fire, matches, waterproof container, and a fire starter. Another one is for repair kit and tools, knife or multi-tool, kits for stove, mattress, and duct tape. Next is for nutrition, have an extra day's supply of food. Next one is for hydration, water bottles, water filter, or other treatment system. And lastly, emergency shelter, tent, tarp, or reflective blanket. And the last one for outdoor recreational activities is orienteering. It is an outdoor navigational recreational activity using specially drawn and detailed maps. It requires navigational skills to navigate from point to point normally moving at a speed. An orienteering course consists of a series of control points which have to be located in order in the shortest possible time. Here's the golden rule of orienteering. First, only go as fast as you can. You should know how to read the map. Second, know where you are. You should have map reading skills. Third, know where you are going. Have route choice skills. The map is a picture or representation of the Earth's surface. It includes a compass rose that shows directions. Cardinal directions are the four base parts on a compass. The top point is north and the point at the bottom is south. The side points are called east and west. The points in between the cardinal directions are called intermediate directions which include northwest, northeast, southwest, and southeast. Maps use a key or legend to explain the meaning of each of the symbols used in the map. The key usually shows a small picture of each of the symbols used on the map, along with a written description of the meaning of each symbol. Maps use a key or legend to explain the meaning of each of the symbols used in the map. The key usually shows a small picture of each of the symbols used on the map, along with a written description of the meaning of each symbol. Another thing you need in orienteering is a compass. This is an invaluable tool that every backpacker should know how to use. It is a magnetized needle floating in a liquid and responding to the Earth's magnetic field consequently revealing directions. Generally, a compass is used to measure bearings and to pinpoint locations. Here are the parts of an orienteering compass. First, magnetic needle. 
the magnetic needle's north end is painted red and its south end is white. Revolving compass housing. The housing is marked with the four cardinal points of north, east, south, and west and further divided into two degree graduations indicating the full 360 degrees of a circle. The bottom of the rotating housing is marked with an orienting arrow and meridian lines. Last, transparent base plate. The base plate is marked with a ruler, an index line, as well as the direction of travel arrow. Another thing is the bearing. Bearing refers to the direction from one spot to another measured in degrees from the reference line of north. How do you take the bearing? First, hold the compass in front of you with the direction of travel arrow pointing at object of interest. Second, hold the compass level steady and rotate the housing dial until the orienting arrow lines up with the red end or north end of the magnetic needle, while keeping the direction of travel arrow pointed at the object. Lastly, read the number indicated at the index line. That is your bearing. What are some benefits that you can get from orienteering? First, conceptual aspects. It enhances your decision-making skills about map interpretations and using compass. Second, physical aspects. Orienteering is basically a running sport so it develops your cardiovascular endurance and general fitness. Third, personal aspects. This activity develops your self-confidence and reliance. Fourth, social aspects. You will learn to work cohesively with one another. Lastly, environmental aspect. It creates an avenue for you to appreciate your environment. What kind of nutrients do you need for you to be able to do these physical activities. First, you need to have protein, which is needed to maintain and rebuild tissues such as muscles. Second, carbohydrates. This is the body's preferred source of energy. Third is fat, which also provides energy. And lastly, water. This will replace water lost through activity. Here are some of the rules of the local governments in promoting physical activity within their locality. Local governments can support physical activity in other ways as well. Parks and recreation departments, for example, often run sports leagues or offer dance, gymnastics, or other active classes. Many cities have worked with school districts to promote walking and bicycling to school. More general efforts to improve traffic safety and enforce traffic laws make streets safer for children to walk, bicycle, and play. Local governments can provide support and resources to local organizations that want to create healthy environments. Always remember that active recreation is an alternative activity that helps us live in a healthy lifestyle and maintain a desired weight. It encompasses activities done both indoor and outdoor that give you enjoyment, satisfaction, fitness, and learning. Your participation in the different indoor and outdoor recreational activities satisfy your recreational needs such as psychological, physiological, educational, and social. And that ends our lesson for the fourth quarter of PE today. I hope you learned a lot about living a healthful lifestyle and benefits of active recreational activities. Now, as I said earlier, I will show you the activities that you need to answer in your PE Module 1 and Module 2. We have a total of two PE modules this quarter, so please make sure that you will finish all your activities.
That will be all for our lesson today. If you have any questions about the lesson or the activities, you can reach me through these posted social media platforms. Thank you all for listening and see you in our next lesson.